Hey everybody, what's going on? Hey, so today we're going to go over something uh, about some storage solutions that we came up with on our boat. Excuse me, I got a bit of a, uh, a sinus infection, so I'm a little plugged up, so I uh, appreciate your patience, but stick around. We're going to talk about some, some pretty cool stuff. Thanks for being here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for clicking on the video. Thanks uh, to all the new subscribers that jumped on board since the last video, the uh, the one about uh, how to tie your own trolling flies part two. I'll put a link up here uh, if you haven't watched it yet. It's a pretty good video. It'll give you some uh, instruction on how to make your own salmon flies, save a bunch of money, and have a blast catching fish on something that you made. Uh, One other thing, I'm sorry, I got a list down here of things. My head is so foggy right now. I wrote a list down here, so if I look down, that's what I'm looking at. Um, a list of things I need to remember. Uh, a while back, I put a video out about some spoons that I had for sale. I'll put a link up here. A lot of them have sold. There's still a few left. I think I got about 50 um, regular sized ones in the Yek, Flintstone, Silver Horde. <clears throat> and I think there was another brand. Um, no mags are left. All the mags are gone. And I think I got about 50 left standard size of the John King spoons also. Those are really cool spoons. If it, I really like them. They, they're lightweight. I'll say that. But they're really nice to run when you're running your meat rigs. If you've got a meat program out because you want to run at a lower speed. Those spoons you can put out also. Um, they, they really tolerate the low speeds really well. But anyway, i got about 50 of the regular left, 50 of the John King left. Uh, I'll tell you right now, let's, I'll sell everything. Um, well, the John Kings I'll sell for $250 a spoon. Let's get them gone. And the regular uh, spoons I'll sell for $225 a spoon. Let's get those gone. Shoot me an email, chrisstangletackle at gmail.com. Let's get those things out of here. Uh, thanks to everybody that's already bought some. So anyway. Let's jump in today about what we're going to talk about. Some storage solutions for your flashers and flies <clears throat> and your meat rigs. Now this is something we've been doing in our boat for a while now. And it really works well for us. And all you need is a swim noodle. And I picked these swim noodles up at uh, Dollar General around here in Michigan. I think the four foot ones are like a buck. And this is the smaller one. And these work a little better for what we're going to do today. There's also the bigger, rounder ones, but they'll work also. So you need a swim noodle, something to cut it with, and then your flash, your fly, and your meat rigs. And really, it's nothing more than doing this. You're going to cut a section out. And I got just a, I got just a utility knife here. I'm going to cut about a two-inch section off this thing. You can use scissors also. About a two-inch section. I'm going to put a slit right down one side. So that's it right there. Now all you got to do when you're done fishing your flashers and your flies, put that around one side, wrap your fly right around it. For years, we just wrapped the fly or the meat rigs right around our flashers. Now this is a Dreamweaver Dragon Slayer. This was a great, great uh, rotator last year for us. Got it paired up with a green, a Dreamweaver green, green crickle fly. I'm having such a hard time talking. I'm sorry. Um, this was a monster combination, though. Um, great, great setup. But you know, it used to be we would just get done and we'd wrap it up along there. And then when you you want to fish it again, you take it a, take it apart and it's got all those beds in it. I didn't like it, so we came up with this. Nothing more than taking that swim noodle, put it right over the edge, and then just wrap that thing right around it. You can wrap it up there pretty tight too. And then you got a nice place to put the hook in. No more guessing, no more trying to figure out how many wraps I got to do around so I can put the hook around it. Real simple solution. Meat rigs, same thing. <clears throat> I've got a uh, Dreamweaver 8 inch blue bubble here. One of the best rotators of all times on the Great Lakes. That thing's caught more fish than I can imagine. And then I got a, uh, I got a paired up with a, a blue bubble meat rig. And it's the same thing. Take your little section of uh, or uh, 
swim noodle. Wrap that thing right around it. It gives you a great place to put that hook. Keeps it out of the way. Now what we do with these, once we got these things wrapped up, that's a great starting point. I mean, you're already ahead of the game, mostly anyway. If you're like us, years and years, wrap it up like that, throw it into a box or someplace on the boat, and uh, there it sat. But what we do now, um, we've done this for a while. We just got a bunch of the Dreamweaver flasher files. Just uh, It's a plastic box, and I forget how many of these go in there, but there's quite a few will fit right down into the, into the file. Box is about yay big. Close it up, they're all set to go. It can be a little tricky getting these to fit down in there once you've got them wrapped up like this. Uh, you might have to stagger, just you know, skip a space, but they'll definitely go in there. And it's so much nicer to have those things wrapped up and ready to go. For our rigs that we use, um, you know, kind of our, our, our hot rigs that we're gonna, we know we're gonna be using that day or that weekend or whatever, or have just been working really well all season long. What we've gone and done on our boat is we went and bought a bunch of the uh, 3M stick on hooks, the small ones. <coughs> Excuse me. And then down in the cabin, um, all you gotta do is, uh, Put those hooks up any place, you know, fiberglass, any place flat. We got, we probably got four, five dozen hooks up, down throughout the cutty. And all our hot rigs, we just hang right up on those. You know, just space them out so they're not rubbing up against each other. But when you got them wrapped up like this and hanging on one of those hooks, it's not going to come loose and they don't get tangled up. It's so nice just to walk down in there, grab that thing off the wall, put it out, run it. If it's not working, grab something else, put that back. Now, the hooks themselves, the 3M hooks, they can be, what I was doing was I was taking the swivel and hanging it up, and it's kind of a bugger to get that to work. So what I went to was, uh, what I went to was just a rubber band. And all I'm doing is I'm just feeding that rubber band through the swivel. And I'm just making a half itch, putting one end through the other. And I can hang that now right off the swivel. And it just dangles right there. And if you're in a hurry, like I've done before, yeah, you grab it. Instead of breaking the swivel or the uh, hook off the wall, the rubber band will probably break. Hey, it's a great way to sit, you know, figure out some storage solutions. That works really well for us. Um, just one of the things we've learned over the years that really helps out. You know. If you ever heard anybody talk about somebody's boat being dialed in, you know, there, there's a saying, I'm sure a lot of you probably heard it, that guy's boat is really dialed in or he's, he's really dialed in on the fish. And it, a lot of that is the way the boat fishes. It truly is. Um, some boats just outfish other boats just due to weight, size, things like that, speed control. You know, that's all crucial. That boat can be really dialed in. But I'm telling you, half of being dialed in is having all your stuff ready to go solutions on your tackle and your storage. I'm telling you right now, it's half the battle. And right now in February, this is the time of the year where we're getting all our stuff ready. We're getting all our gear dialed in so our boat is even that much more ready. So anyway, a couple, couple things to think about. Thanks for putting up with me and my congestion. Thanks for tuning in as always. Uh, you guys are great. We really appreciate it. You guys are the absolute best. Stick around. We're going to have some great other videos coming up soon. Um, we're going to start uh, we're going to start some, some basic stuff, some basic programs, um, just basic stuff on really the four most common fishing techniques, spoons, flasher flies, meat rigs, and plugs. And we're just going to make a series on that. We're going to cover each one individually, a separate video. Uh, I think we'll call it fundamental fishing, you know, spoons, meat rigs, whatever, etc., etc. Uh, I think I'm going to start that next week, one of those videos. So I'm going to put a poll up right here, uh, which one you want to see first. Spoons, flash or fly, meat rig, or plugs. Let me know what you want to see first. I'll do that one first. All right, thanks again for watching. You guys are the greatest. Be safe. Enjoy your time on the water.